Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I did an unboxing of this film just a little bit ago. Please go watch that video. Go support that video. I unboxed this copy of the movie. Broke down what exactly is in it. Yada, yada, all that. But now it's time for part two of getting a new Blu-ray. And that's re-watching the film. I have seen this movie once. Uh, most Marvel movies, I've found, I see them twice in theaters. I did not see this one a second time. I saw this once, was not a fan of it. If you saw my review, go watch that also. You would know. Um, but we're going to rewatch it today. We're going to see if it's aged at all. And I might check out some of the bonus features when I'm done. So, let's watch! <laughs> You could win. All right, the credits are rolling, and that is a rewatch of Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I feel mostly the same as I felt coming out of it the first time. I'm gonna turn this down. Holy crap. I will say though, I think it is marginally better on a rewatch when I don't have any preconceived expectations about the movie or what I want from the movie. And viewing this as the final Ant-Man movie instead of Avengers 5 setup like they want you to, I think makes it better. It's easier to come to terms with Kang's fate if you do it that way. I still think there's a lot of stupid stuff in here that detracts from me really liking it, like uh, Veb, most of the Quantum Realm stuff in general. Uh, the fact that Janet just kept the secret because they hadn't decided they were going to do Kang yet when they did Ant-Man the Wasp, so they thought of a really dumb reason as to why Janet didn't reveal anything. Uh, I still don't think Scott really has an arc in this. Uh, a, a lot of the same stuff I thought last time, I still think this time. Um, what happened to MODOK <laughs> still bothers, or how MODOK went out still bothers me, how Kang went out kind of bothers me. Uh, but I had... I had enough fun with it. You know, it was, it was it was entertaining. It was enjoyable. Not the worst MCU movie by any means. I don't even think it's top three worst MCU movies by any means. So, has that going for it. Best thing in this movie, we all agree, it's still Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. He's incredible in this role. But, as these credits finish and I watch the final post credit scene that sets up Loki Season 2, um... After this, I'm going to boot up some of the special features. I'm going to run through, probably not watch all of them, because uh, I don't want to watch all of them. But I'll probably watch some that, that look interesting, scroll through the menu, see what there is. Um, and that'll be fun. All right, so you guys saw that quick little recap now with me having seen the movie twice. Just laying out my quick thoughts after a rewatch. But how is this release in general? I checked out the bonus features. And I watched all of them because there aren't many. So I actually find this release quite disappointing. Uh, it's weird because as the conclusion to the Ant-Man trilogy and ushering in the multiverse saga, you would expect that there would be more on this Blu-ray than there are. There are two featurettes. There's All in the Family and Formidable Foes, which All in the Family is kind of uh, the ant group, as they call them, um, with all of our uh, pins and... Uh, Van Dynes and our Langs, and then uh, Formidable Foes, which is a featurette about Kang and Modok. And I mean, all together, that's like maybe 16 minutes of stuff that we get, it feels like. Um, and then there's a short two minute gag reel and two deleted scenes that I swear were both in the movie, so I'm not sure what part of them were deleted. Um, and so it was weird because I got through everything this had to offer, except the audio commentary. I got through everything that this Blu-ray had to offer within 20, 25 minutes of me exploring all the extras, uh, which is a bummer for any release, really. But especially for a movie that Marvel has been marketing to be uh, this very important film that you have to watch to understand where they're going from here and really ushering in the Kang Dynasty and the Multiverse Saga in general and Phase 5 and 6. They've been saying they're supposed to be built off the back of this film. And there's not much to the release. The movie's not that great. None of the bonus features. 
or that great. Um, but you've seen my review, you've seen countless reviews talking about that. Um, so that's just kind of my rundown on the Blu-ray of this film. I don't know if there's more on the 4K. There's probably not. Um, I do wonder, it, it makes me wonder in a way, of if they're putting less on here, so that way you have to watch the Assembled episode when they put that on Disney+. Plus. Because if you have to watch the Assembled episode, then that's more Disney Plus subscriptions. I actually wouldn't be surprised if that's what they're doing. Um, I'm going to watch the Assembled episode because I love watching Assembled. But yeah, it was gnarly when I pulled up the extras menu and there were five things on there. I didn't like that very much. But there you guys go. So that is my uh, my quick thoughts on a rewatch of Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania as well as my little review of the Blu-ray here of the film. Um, so if this either convinced you or if this convinced you to either buy it or not buy it, cool. And just as I said in my unboxing video, you know, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on this film, uh, either the first time or ha after having rewatched it like I just did. And also which version of this you're buying if you are buying it or are you just going to catch it on Disney Plus, uh, which it's actually at the time of recording and uploading this. It is up on Disney+. Plus, uh, So there you guys go. So leave all that down in the comments below. Also leave a like on this video. Subscribe. Click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from the NCHQ. This can be it. Have a great day, guys.